I'm Adelaide. And I'm Diana. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript covers protests and advocacy at NHS regarding gun control, introduces you to some less well-known members of NHS sports teams, and explores the larger societal meanings attached to hair. Democrat Connor Lamb has declared victory in the special election in Pennsylvania's 18th Congressional District. However, the results will likely be subject to a recount due to the close margin of victory. By Wednesday, Lamb led the Republican candidate by around 600 votes, with some absentee ballots still to be counted. The race was closely watched by the Republican Party, with the GOP pouring $10 million into the race in a district which Trump won by 20 percentage points in 2016. On Tuesday, President Trump announced that he had fired Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and would nominate CIA Director Mike Pompeo to replace him. Gina Haspel, CIA Deputy Director, will replace Mike Pompeo as Director of the CIA and will become the first woman to hold that position. Mr. Tillerson reportedly learned of his firing through a tweet by President Trump. This change in leadership comes in advance of a potential plan for President Trump to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un regarding North Korea's nuclear weapons program. On Wednesday, Philippines President Duterte announced that the country will withdraw from the International Criminal Court due to the court's announcement that it will begin investigating potential crimes against humanity in Duterte's war on drugs. Police have killed over 4,100 drug suspects since Duterte took office in 2016. Various rights groups allege that around 8,000 more have been killed in that time period. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. On February 14, 2018, a mass shooting at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School left 17 people dead and more wounded, making it one of the world's deadliest school massacres. Since then, student survivors at the high school have sprung into action advocating for tougher gun control in their state and the nation. These students spearheaded a movement for the National School Walkout, which was held on March 14th at 10 a.m. across the nation. We're here because we've had enough. It was enough with Sandy Hook. It was enough with Columbine. And it was enough long before Parkland. The powerful students of Parkland started this movement. Now we need to keep it going. In our own city, students formed the Pioneer Valley Students for Gun Control, which held in our Hampton High walkout last Wednesday. I sat down with Sherilyn Strader, a member of the group, to learn more about what was behind their organization. This shooting was different from the rest because the students in Parkland decided that they were going to lead this movement. The walkout organization was kind of all over the place, but that kind of makes it more fun. Uh, we had a meeting where we made signs for the walkout. I think everyone sort of knew about it through social media, and so that made it super easy to want to get involved. I think after the walkouts, a lot of students will be focusing on organizing the march, and after that, I think we should be focusing on getting as many students as possible to Beacon Hill to lobby for this legislation. For many students, this may be their first time organizing and participating in this kind of action and advocacy. So what motivated these students to take action around this issue? I spoke to several students at the walkout to learn what motivated them to leave class and what they hope comes out of this action. I decided to walk out because this is a huge issue in our country that I think we need to address. I'm done with just sitting around and I think things need to change and they need to change now. Being a school that's just another one on the list of all the high schools in the country that are walking out, like I feel like that's going to make a big difference. Gun control is such a big issue in America at this time and I just, no kid should have to go to school and be worried about getting shot. I'm walking out because this is us. This is a nationwide thing and we need to stand up, we need to be heard. However, not all NHS students chose to walk out, with a fair amount of students staying in their classes. Additionally, a few students chose to counter protests at the walkout, holding signs that advocated for the preservation of their Second Amendment. In specific cases, the laws are not really enforced. Like in the case of the Parkland shooting, um, that kid should not have been able to buy a gun. He had the police called on and, on him several times and I believe the law should be enforced but I don't really think that any further laws should be pushed although I would support simple stuff like bans on bump stocks. I believe that the current laws if they are enforced are 
sufficient. I have several friends who walked out not really about pushing a sort of gun control agenda so much as they just wanted to honor the victims. I've had a lot of discussions with people in classes and stuff. People don't respond in a hostile way. Sometimes they respond in a way like, oh, you clearly are pro-shooting. I'm not pro-shooting. I think that a lot of the time, the things I say aren't really things that people in this area have heard. The Pioneer Valley Students for Gun Control is committed to continuing their work to organize around gun control. And we'll hold a march from NHS to City Hall at noon on March 24th to protest gun violence. I'm Flor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. <laughs> Dang, that was a dream. I'm still a bench warmer. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? The term bench warmer has been used for decades to describe players on sports teams who do not receive a lot of playing time. This term normally has a negative connotation, and bench warmers are often looked at as the weak links on the team by the media, fans, and scouts. It's no secret that the media outlets tend to focus on one to four of the team's star players, depending on the sport, despite the fact that a team would not be a team without the full, complete roster. Almost always, it is never a matter of lack of skill or hard work, just other factors such as position, height, age, and natural athletic ability. I decided to interview some of NHS's winter sports unsung heroes, the bench warmers, who do not receive as much attention this year, but still matter just as much. Working hard in practice, even if I like don't get the minutes in the games, it uh, pushes myself and my teammates and makes them better. Practice is a really good time to always be motivated because it gives you a chance to prove to your coach and teammates that you want the time and you deserve the time. I feel like everybody on the team works just as hard. A lot of people assume that people, kids who don't play as much aren't as like good or aren't capable of like playing those kind of minutes, but I think everybody should know that they are and they could step in. In a way, a bench warmer, most important position. I'd say we really embody the whole, the spirit of the Blue Devil itself and the team as a whole, you know. We really have that like, that fire and the passion for the game but we just have to keep it in, in our section of the bench until we get our chance to like, just let it blow on the court. Where'd you learn to move like that, Sam? I practice every time you bench me. In addition to these supporting team players, there are many others whose work contributes to making our Northampton High sports teams a success. One such as the team manager. I sat down with Ryan Hallowell, varsity boys basketball manager to learn more about his role. Uh, I've been playing basketball for, for most of my life, so just like it was just easy to just switch roles. I do this JV stat books uh, for every game, and then um, for varsity I do the book for them, just doing the points and keeping track of rebounds and stuff, and then I also do uh, photographs for the team. I'm thinking of actually going to college for sports management, so I'm thinking of just picking up as that throughout high school and just finish it off in college and that's a career. Congrats to all the winter sports teams on a very successful season. Thanks for watching Hamped Up, I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Odette Bennis and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It where all things pop culture are covered. We all have hair, and you may think hair is just hair, but for many women, their identity, their hair, or lack of are closely linked. Or at least that's what society makes us believe. From Princess Mia's transformation to Beyonce's hair transition and lemonade, hair is at the root of how women are perceived in today's society. Since hair has a different meaning for women of all ages, we sat down with two NHS students, Megan Montero and Zalia Maya, to get an insight on how the significance of hair affects their daily life. Um, for me personally, hair is um, a great way for expression. It also has to do a lot with my identity. I think growth of body hair and not shaving body hair is very prominent in the feminist movement nowadays. I mean, there's that whole thing with dyeing your armpit hair um, and just kind of, kind of showing something that was related to like a more masculine trait, a more strong, empowering thing, that it can be okay for women to have um, more body hair. Less people are thinking, I need to have straight blonde hair. 
um, to be cool or whatever. Um, and more people are thinking about hair as an outward way to show who they are and to show what they are. As a black female in America, I feel that my hair is very important to me. And I feel that it's very important to me because like, of the fact that we're already judged based on our skin tone. So like, we need our hair to express ourselves. And that's why I do my hair in several different hairstyles all the time. Like I have it in a puff sometimes, I have it in braids, I straighten it. I do a lot of different things, but that's just like, it's because it represents who I am as an individual. We sat down with the CEO of the National Alopecia Arrieta Foundation, Dory Kranz, to speak how societal views on hair affects women and girls of today. Our work includes providing support for people who live with alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune disease that results in hair loss raising awareness so that we reduce the amount of suffering due to stigma and misperception. It's especially difficult because of all of the commercial, television commercial and magazines and how, like, things that are desirable in society are marketed by women with lush, beautiful hair. You know, I've heard young women talk about not dating because they're afraid of that moment when, uh, you know, a boyfriend leans in for that first kiss and their wig gets dislodged or the guy feels that they have a wig and they haven't had that conversation yet. And so they just avoid the whole relationship scene altogether. Everything is sort of idealized with beautiful women with beautiful hair. And so I think it's difficult for men, too. I, I really have heard that it's not just difficult for women. I'm Odette Venice, and this was Hit It or Miss It. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Both Adelaide and I are from the NHS production of The Head of Variations, which was formed at the Massachusetts Educational Theatre Guild Drama Festival. This weekend, we will have a performance tonight at 7 and Saturday at 5 in the NHS Auditorium with performances from Jane Hansen's One Prop Review. It's a serious place in the office, you need to know your place, but it can also be a fun place. You want to go through the day with laughter, enjoying, helpful, but make it a warm and welcoming place. What do we want? Gun control! What do we want? Now! What do we want? Gun control! When do we want it? Now! Creating one piece, like one of my pieces, takes like um, a bunch of reworking, which adds up to like four or five hours. <laughs> Transcript, uh, 